Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, are my eyes open? Yeah, somewhat. Such an effort. Mm. It's like pulling up Venetian blinds that are stuck. Too much nightlife, young woman. I don't care how sleepy I am this morning. Coney Island was an inspiration last night, darling. <laughs> Do your bones ache? How'd you know? Oh, I knew. Every last one of them. I can hardly bend over to tie my shoes. Oh, I creak. Sissy. It's all the baby's fault. Oh. If I hadn't been having to be quiet having them all summer, my bones would be in much more agile condition. Yeah, that's right. Blame the poor, helpless little baby for the normal effects of old age. <laughs> Think you'll be able to sit down for breakfast, or do you want to go back to bed? Oh, I wouldn't be able to get back into bed. Besides, I'm starving. After all the frankfurters and ice cream That you was ate. last night. This is this morning. I developed a furious appetite, in case you're interested. <laughs> Listen to our rooster. He's in very good voice this morning. Mm, we ought to give him a watch for Christmas. He starts crowing much too early. The sun rises early. I love summer. You better love it while you can. There are just a couple more days in August. Is that all? Mm, a week from Monday's Labor Day. Already? Oh, no, it can't be. All right, then. It can't be, if you'd rather. But, David, that means the summer's almost over. Exactly. I can't bear it. You'd be surprised. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Tell you what? About Labor Day. What would you have done about it? I would have grabbed the bull by the horns, that's what. I don't like to seem thick, but um, which particular bull uh, have you in mind? That settles it. Claudia, I am hanging on to my teeth, but you've left me way behind. Just what are you talking about? Summer, to think it's almost gone. Well, that's life. Summer's so fast and winter's so slow. I've let it trickle through my fingers like like water. Oh, David, our first summer in Eastbrook, and it's almost over. Well, we'll, we'll have others. They won't be the first. So they'll be the second and the third and the fourth. You have no soul, Mr. Norton. But I do have a stomach, and it wants breakfast. I'm ready. Think your creaky joints can navigate the creaky stairs? <laughs> David, listen, if it rains one drop between now and fall, if it rains... One day during your vacation, What I'll... do you do besides wear a raincoat? A pine away, that's what. Summer really goes so fast. There's time for nothing to do but try to realize it. Now you're learning about life. Mrs. Norton, oh, good morning. Bertha, isn't it a beautiful day? Morning, Bertha. Good morning, Mr. Norton. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. But it is beautiful up here, even when it rains. And Bertha has learned even more about life. Um, uh, Mrs. Norton... I have a message for you. From who? Hmm. Well, I mean, who? I have his name written what? down. I He called <laughs> so many times last night while you were out. I wonder who it could be. He says, uh, very important, you should telephone him early this morning. It is getting very exciting. Oh, he was excited, too, I, I think. Ooh. I told him he must wait until this morning. He did not like that. I think there's some mysterious stranger in your life that I know nothing of, Mrs. Norton. There is, but I know nothing of either, Mr. Norton. Now, you sit down to breakfast, and I, uh, I look for the paper with his name on. Exciting, isn't it? Oh, thrilling. Where did I put A man, a man, a man, a man, a man. Who could it be? Mm. Fuller brush man. No. Pass me the cream, will you, darling? Yeah. Mm. What man would be calling you up in the middle of the night? But you're more curious than I am. Well, I should be. I'm your husband. Is that what you are? How what sweet of you to remind me. I almost forgot. The name. Uh, Want some cream, husband? It was a name. Uh, it was a very curious name, uh, Mister. Mister. Jam. Uh, oh, that's a very attractive name, Jam. Uh, I like jam, that. who or should I say, what kind of jam? Yeah, uh, was I wonder how many jams I know. Apple jam, peach jam, huckleberry uh, jam, boysenberry jam, no gooseberry me. jam, and oh. pajamas. Uh, there was something more to it. Uh, uh, varnish. Varnish? Varnish, yeah. V-A-R-N-E-Y. Yeah, that is varnish, it. He yeah. says you should call him. Yeah. Jam varnish. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, for Jim Barney, that was pretty close, Bertha. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? I don't say I didn't tell you. No, I, I go get the coffee. Tell me what, baby? I told you the other night when we met him at his summer theater, he'd be after you. Oh, nonsense. He probably wants to invite you out to lunch with him or That's something. That's not the way it looks from where I sit. David, take that funny look off your face. Well, aren't you going to call him? What for? Find out what he wants so anxiously. Who cares what he wants? Not I, certainly. Well, I care. You're so curious all of a sudden. You bet I am. Predatory men calling up my wife. Oh, David, I love it when you act like a husband. Then do as I say and call him up. I haven't got time to call up people. I'm not interested in what they have to say. Summer's almost over. All right, all right, then. Don't call him up. I suppose it would be rude not to. Hmm. You don't uh, mind uh, being rude, do you? Oh, all right, I'll call him. Just for you. Yeah, of course, just for me. Coffee will get hard, the eggs will get cold. And everything. Jim Varney's sort of nice, isn't he? Mm, not bad, if you like the type. Do you? It is difficult for me to judge what he must seem like to a woman. Oh, well, I can't tell about him either. I'm a wife. But if he has any ideas... What kind, David? Do skip it. Hello? 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 <laughs> Excuse me, is, is Mr. Varnish there? I mean, Mr. Varnish? Mr. Jam well, uh, Varnish. Who's is calling him? <laughs> it's Mrs. David Norton. Oh, hello, honey. This is Jim. Uh, <clears throat> you, you called me last night, Mr. Varney. Well, and, uh, uh, at least ten times. Ten times? How would you like to come over to the theater this morning? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sort of busy. busy. Sure, I know you are. You've got a baby. <laughs> that isn't what I meant, Mr. Varney. Well, you're not too busy to play a part in my next play, are you? What did you say? I say that I've got a part for you in my next play. I thought that's what you said. A mm -hmm. sweetheart of a part, too. What's he saying, darling? He's got a sweetheart, David. What? I mean, I mean for me. Well, maybe I'd better talk to him. Shh. Hello. Hello? I'm still here, Mr. Varney. David, Good. don't go away. Oh, so that's it. What did you say, uh, honey? I haven't said anything yet. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The girl I had in the park called this morning and said she was sick. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you sorry about? She said she thought she'd be all right in a few days, but when I remembered that you lived right around the corner, I told her not to bother recuperating so fast. So how about it? It's awfully sweet of you to think of me, Mr. Varney, but... Call me Jim. It's still awfully sweet of you, but I... Um... What's sweet of him? David, I'll tell you. Just be quiet. Yes, honey, I can't hear you. I don't think I really could, Mr. Va... Uh, I mean, Jim. Oh, it's Jim, is Look, it? Uh, I know last June I said thumbs down when you wanted to work in my theater, but... Well, if you're doing this just to get even with me... I'm not that kind of a girl. Claudia, what is he suggesting? <laughs> not what you think, David. Come on now, say you will, honey. Just as a favor to me. Please. I can't, really, I can't, Mr. Varney. Next week is David's vacation, and besides, summer's almost over. Oh, we're back to that again. Exactly, Let's go around, so this huh? is the last chance you'll get. Jim, thank you ever so much for thinking of me, but I'm afraid my answer is no. No what? David, you're worse than I am. Go away. Well, uh, you really mean no? I think so. I, I appreciate your calling. When you say no um, to a man, apologies don't help. Shut up. What was that, honey? I wasn't talking to you, Jim. It's just to a, a nuisance around here. That's you, David. I'm Mr. Varnish. Uh, Claudia, if uh, you change your mind in the next hour, <laughs> call me, huh? I won't call anybody until I hear from you. Thanks, but that's not, not necessary, Jim. So long, yeah. honey, and uh, my best to your husband. Honestly, I never heard anyone behave the way you do. He sent you his regards, David. Mm, great. Let's have breakfast, hmm? Sure, I'm ready. All the things in the... I never dreamed this would happen. If it did, I never thought I'd say what I did. I... David, don't you want to know what happened? Only if you want to tell me. Of course I want to tell you, Dope. You'd, you'd never guess. Good, that saves me trying. You are looking at an actress, Mr. Norton. I am? At least one who could have been one if she'd said yes instead of no. Yes to what? Don't look so suspicious. <laughs> Jim Varney offered me a part. A sweetheart of a part opening on Labor Day night. And you said no? You heard me? Well, why on earth did you refuse? Because I wanted to. You wanted not to be in a play? What's so surprising about that? 
Well, I thought the greatest dream of your life was to be another Catherine Cornell or something. Well, that was before I knew any better. But only a couple of months ago, you were A couple were saying... of months. It can be a long time. Well, not that long. What's got into you? The summer's nearly over, David. I can't waste it pretending I'm, I'm somebody else. There isn't enough time for that. Oh. You and I, we've got too many things to do together. Now, darling, if you think you're doing this for me... For right, us! Call up Jim Barney, darling. Tell him you'll do it. But David, I... I don't really think I want to. Sure you do. You you just think you don't. We're going to have many more summers and many more vacations to spend together. I want them all. Greedy. I am greedy. For you. You said next week you were going to take your vacation. I'm not going to tie myself up while we could be having a wonderful... Well, maybe I'd like you to. Maybe then I'd have a real vacation. You don't mean that, do you? <laughs> maybe I do. But what I do mean, darling, is grab your chance while it's offered to you. Someday you might be sorry you didn't. I doubt it. Not as long as you are... you. Look, you know, I'd... I'd rather spend every minute of my vacation with you rather than anybody else or, or doing anything else. But but this is different. It's It's important to you. It's your dream. Now, don't give it up for me. David, you don't want to be married to an actress. You said so. I married a woman. If she's an actress, too, well, so much the better. Then I'll retire from architecture and take care of my garden. I wonder if I could do it. You bet your sweet life you can. You won't be embarrassed if I'm back. No, you'll be great. I know it. I'll be famous as Claudia Brown's husband. Mm, hmm? Fat chance. Now do it, darling. Not, not for me. For yourself. There goes our summer. The best laid plans of mice and men. Oh, David, you're the most generous, the most understanding husband I ever married. Now kiss me and shut up. Even for you women who enjoy shopping, there come moments when it doesn't seem worth the effort. Moments when you want brown and they have blue. When you want to pay 30 and they ask 50. At such moments, you'll find it wise as well as pleasant to pause and refresh yourself with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Shop refreshed, and you take new heart. You resolve to make a wise selection. And if you have to go home empty-handed, you'll go home in better spirits if you shop refreshed. Hello? Well, Mr. King, congratulate me. This is Varney speaking. What's up? I just got a call from Claudia, and she said yes. Then I do congratulate you. I think you've gotten yourself a fine little actress for the part. Well, Claudia's more than that. I think we're going to get along fine. What kind of a part is it? Well, Claudia doesn't know yet, so why should you? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, patience is a virtue, hmm? Well, you don't mind waiting until tomorrow to find out? Or, uh, do you? Oh, I do mind, but I will wait. See you then, Mr. Barney. I'll see you, Joe. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>